Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 8 for chapter 2. In this video, we look into some theoretical aspect for first order linear equations. We will discuss the existence and uniqueness theorem. Okay, let's look at the theorem. So, um, now assume that we seek differentiable functions as solution to a linear equation of the following form. This is the standard form of our first order linear equation with the initial condition given at t bar. If now the two functions, the coefficient functions pt and the right hand side gt are continuous and bounded on an open interval containing t bar where the initial condition is given. Then the equation has a solution on the interval and the solution is unique. Okay, so pay attention to the wording here. So here we are seeking differentiable functions. So that's a restriction. And then under that, the conditions, the criteria for the existence of a unique solution is that PT and GT are continuous and bounded on an interval containing the initial time. Okay, and let's look at a brief proof, well, rather an argument. So, for the existence of a solution, that part we have already figured out because we have a method of integrating factors which will give us a function which we can verify is a solution. Now, as for the uniqueness, um, let's put up an argument. So, now let's assume that we have two different solutions, y1 and y2. They both solve the problem here, which means if I plug y1 into the equation it holds and y1 satisfy the initial condition, and then if I plug y2 into the equation, it holds and also does the initial condition. Well, um, now let's define the, um, I call it error, or you can also call the difference function. That is the difference between y1 and y2. And then we can find out an equation for this e of t here by subtracting this equation with that one on both sides, term by term. So y1 minus y2 prime will give you e prime, and p y1 minus p y2 give you p e, and the right hand side g minus g gives you zero. And then what is the initial condition for the e? Well, um, y1 at t bar minus y2 at t bar give you e at t bar, which is y bar minus y bar, and is zero. So we find out that the quantity e here solves this in first order linear equation with the initial condition zero at t bar. Okay, now we can use our um, knowledge um, from the discussion of the direction of field. This is, if you move this term to the right hand side, I have e prime equal to p times e. And then we see that um, if e at an initial point is zero, or at any point is zero, the direction of field at that point will remain horizontal, and uh, e constantly equal to zero is the solution. And if that is the solution, then that means y1 must equal to y2. And therefore, there is only one solution. So this implies the uniqueness. 
Okay, now let's look at um, some applications of using the existence and uniqueness theorem to answer the questions. And one important usage here is that we can use this theorem to identify intervals where the solution of the initial value problem could be defined. Let's take a look at the first example. So he asks you, find the largest interval where the solution can be defined for the following problem. And we um, don't need to solve the problem. We just need to apply the existence and uniqueness theorem. Okay, so um, let's look at the first part A, t y prime plus t equal to t cube. And the initial condition t bar is at minus one. So how do you figure this out. So comparing the equation here to the standard form in the theorem, we see that we need to manipulate a little bit. We can divide both sides by t, so we get y prime standing with coefficient 1. If we do that, then we have y prime plus 1 over ty equal to t squared. So the function pt here is 1 over t, and it is not defined at t equals 0. So we can think like this is a bad point. At t equals 0, solution undefined. And now look at the initial condition. It's given at t bar, which is negative 1. So from negative 1, you can extend to the left to negative infinity. Everything is fine. And if you extend it to the right, and then you will hit t equals 0, which you cannot cross. Okay, so therefore we conclude the interval is t less than 0. Let's look at another equation. So it is actually the same equation here, but the initial condition is given at a different um, time. t bar here equals 1. Okay, so use the discussion in part A, we know that t cannot be 0. If the initial condition is given at 1, then um, from 1 you go to the left and you cannot cross 0. And then if you go to the right, you can go to plus infinity. So you conclude the interval is t bigger than 0. Okay, the next is this equation. Um, the new thing here is um, it involves a function which uh, has restrictions on its domain and uh, t bar is 1. Okay, so we know that we need to rewrite the equation into the standard form by dividing both sides um, with a t minus 3 and then we get this. So this is our function p of t, and this is our function g of t. So let's look at for what values are um, these two functions defined and are continuous. So for p of t here, we see that t cannot be 3, because otherwise the denominator is 0. And furthermore, ln of t requires t to be bigger than 0. Okay, so t has to be bigger than 0 and cannot be 3. Now let's look at the initial condition, which is given at t bar equals 1. Then um, you see from 1, if you go to the left, you cannot cross 0, so you stop there. And if you go to the right, increasing the 1, and then when you reach t equals 3, you cannot cross. Therefore, we conclude the interval is t between 0 and 3. Okay, um, one more example. So y prime plus 10ty equals sine t, and initial conditions given at pi. So, um, so t bar is pi. Then we need to find uh, um, domains for the function p and the function g where um, 
they are defined. And we see for sine function, there's no restriction. But for the tan function, you know the tan function periodically goes to plus infinity and negative infinity where it is not defined. So at all the points where t equals um, 2k plus 1 over 2 pi, for all integer values of k, um, it is not defined. Then we just need to figure out the value pi and lies in which of these uh, intervals cut by these values. And you can easily sketch this on a number line, and then you see that um, pi lies between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and therefore that is the interval. Okay, so let's conclude with some remarks. So we notice that the conditions in the theorem would guarantee the existence and uniqueness of the solution. Now, if the conditions should fail, this doesn't mean we don't have uniqueness. We might still have uniqueness, but it's not guaranteed. It's not implied by this theorem. So also, in many applications, one may have um, discontinuous functions for pt and gt. And then, and in this case, um, we can still define solution. We can relax our restriction on the solution. And we can require the solution to be only continuous. If that is the case, then the conditions for existence and uniqueness will be relaxed. Here we would only need to require p and q to be integrable functions. In the next video, we will look into situations where the coefficients are discontinuous, and then we will show you how to construct solution. Nevertheless, they exist. Okay? So that's all I have to say for this video. I um, hope you liked it and uh, I'll see you next time.